It's been a while since I've done a video. Um, I think the last one was maybe the mini bike races and I've just been kind of playing catch up ever since. I've gotten quite a few projects on the bench. Uh, I've got some stuff out of here. Um, oh, I do want to say um, Utah Mike saw that calendar in the background a long time ago and he actually sent me something after I got done with his stuff. It's actually really cool. He sent me the matching clock. So that was very, very cool. Um, he also sent me a set of uh, 95th anniversary uh, snap-on screwdrivers. I thought that was really neat too. So those are kind of cool, a little display there. So yeah. Big thanks to uh, Utah Mike. Um, he's got a pretty cool uh, Chopper Triumph project, so um, that was awesome. The um, kind of routine right now has been unit uh, Triumphs, and so I've been getting those out. But uh, a couple of the other things I've been working on, I've got this 66 uh, over here, and then um, I did wanna show you guys Normally I would never do this. Um, <clears throat> I actually quit doing covers even, just because it takes so much time. Um, but a friend of mine, I'm helping him put his bike together. And uh, anyway, long story short, I am polishing a set of cases. And so um, I've been plugging away at that, um, making a huge mess. Um, but it's, sat it, it's satisfying, I, I enjoy doing it. Um, but uh, it's just not something that makes sense normally because it is just incredibly time consuming. But um, for this particular project, I was super down and um, wanted to help him out. So I've just been kind of chipping away at it, getting different areas, just kind of testing to see where I'm at. He's got a cool finned cover there. Um, and so, yeah, it's cool stuff. He had me cut the tang off there, but um, this is for my friend Steve. Uh, you'll probably meet him uh, eventually in the, in the videos, but... Um, yeah, so I'm doing this. I've got this engine. Um, it's a patina build. He does not want anything done aesthetically. He just wants it gone through. Um, and then I've got this engine. Um, it's uh, kind of up in the air right now. Um, I don't really know where the direction we're going. I'm going to get it apart and uh, kind of give the, idea, the guy an idea of what it needs. And then we're going to decide how far. And then I've got this one here that I just need to finish. I need to do the top end and just kind of get the last few pieces uh, buttoned up. So um, I've been doing that. I've been on that one on and off. Uh, like I said, I've gotten quite a few top ends in and out of here, um, but I need to do this one. I need to do this one. Um, that's uh, Anna, uh, the flat tracker, Anna Banana. I did her uh, big bore kit and I need to finish putting that together, but I gotta get back in the frame before I can help them kind of tag teaming that with uh, Baxter Cycle. So. There's some things that I don't like about this stand, and so I want to get some experience on it, and maybe I'll think of some better things that I want to do for my stand. Um, but first of all, we have to get it mounted up, which is kind of one of my first complaints. I'm not really sure why this was uh, the front idea when there was a perfectly good option available. Um, obviously, the rear one's not a big deal, because that's where you'd want to mount it anyway, but that's not my favorite. Um, and then I'm not a big fan of the fact that it doesn't come with um, any hardware. I'm going to drive that out and then um, we'll get it on this stand. It's always so annoying when the uh, corrosion and I think there's, I think it's Loctite or something. It's like that. It's orange, so not sure what that is. Um, I'm going to, man, I don't know. Can't really use this factory bowl. It's all chewed up, needs replaced anyway, so I don't, I don't know. Um, I think I've got that long skinny bolt for that purpose, but again, that's my first complaint. You, do, you have to go out and buy some big, long, skinny, goofy bolt. doesn't come with one, so that's kind of annoying. Um, I'm gonna use, I've got a bunch of hardware kits laying around, so I'm just gonna use the stock um, lower engine mount bolt, but um, yeah, I don't know. That's kind of the first gripe I'm going to have.
Alright. <sighs> now, I'll be right back. I can't find the bolt, so I'm gonna quit wasting time and just shove this piece of rod through here. Okay. Oh, man. Alright, well, now that we have our engine on our stand, I'm gonna work my way from the top down. Eh, it's not as bad as I thought. I mean, there's some oil, definitely some oil. Also, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> um. Oh, you can see, you can see the ring. What the? Okay, pretty wet, you know. I was kind of hoping it was gonna be like super, super gnarly, but um, you know, this is just kind of normal, really. Not good, not good, I didn't say good, but I normal. And remember, this is all getting reused, we're not doing a restoration, so all these bits and hardware, anything that's still usable, I'm using. Usable, I'm using. That doesn't sound good. Okay, so normally you don't see, um, you know, there's some wiggle, I guess, in a, in a piston, but normally you can't see the ring. And I'm hoping I can get you guys close enough to where you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, I think you can kind of see the shiny edge right there. I can, like, expose it. Normally you wouldn't be able to rock it to where the ring is being exposed. So I cannot wait to uh, measure this because ooh, those are some dark bores, dude. Oh my God. Okay, cool. Well, I'm glad he, glad he sent it here to get done, so. Oh man, I bet this thing is just I bet it was slapping. Okay, cool. I want to just show you. I don't know. It's been a while since it's been apart or whoever put it together got carried away because everything I've touched has been a little over tightened. Um, we've talked about this before, but when like a set of cylinders doesn't want to come off, don't ever pry against anything because it's probably going to be too fragile. But what you can do is take your plastic or rubber hammer and you hit the fin square on it usually will shock that base to come loose. So all we need to do is just get that gasket, whatever's gluing it together to just, you know, break free. And it doesn't usually take much. Yep, I can already tell. But as long as you hit the cylinder square, you should be safe. Um, the other thing, we've got our O-rings holding our tappets in, so we don't have to cam followers, whatever you want to call them. The one thing we have to be careful with now is I think the pistons are low enough in the bore that they'll take the, the beating, uh, but you just don't want the rods to be all the way up because then you're more likely to have them crash and, and get damaged. So we're going to try and slip this off and keep those pistons down low, and then that way we don't have to worry about our rods bashing into anything. Ooh, you know what that means? We love when there's silicone at the bottom of all the... Hardware. Oh God! Don't put silicone in your threads. All this does is give. Man, I really hope none of these are blown out. It blows out the backside. It did just. Don't do that. Do not do that. I hate this. Ugh. Okay. Um, I gotta grab those two. Yeah. Don't put. Don't put anything in your uh the bottom of your threads because or on your threads i should say because what happens is it all piles up at the back side and it hydro locks and then it blows out the inside i'll show you where but um i've had to do so many repairs because they get uh compressed and explode on the back and so it's not worth it don't do that nothing too crazy and luckily that must have been our first fresh batch of uh blue silicone but the back sides of these all look to be in decent shape um so uh thank god we don't have to do any repairs uh, I'll get this one 
we're gonna get this rotor nut loose first. And so you're gonna kinda just pry against each other. That wasn't too bad. All right, and then, is this the same? Yeah, might be more of a standard size. Again, not too bad. Now, once you get this out, there is a washer nice thick distance washer and now if this it yeah it shouldn't really want to fall off if it did that'd be a problem but that's a uh, the clutch hub center is um, on a tapered on the main shaft and so you do need that puller so I'm gonna go grab it you want to install your puller tool because this is the safest way to get this apart Make sure you thread it in pretty deep. It's a shallow, there's, it's a shallow thread in there, but just make sure you get it all the way in because you will pull those threads out and you don't want that. Where's my actual red? I always forget how close you guys can be and still be able to get a lot in frame. Yesterday was not a good day for filming. I got interrupted so many times. Um, so, I was on the phone and just kept working. Um, obviously didn't get that far, but I got the rest of the primary pulled off, got that window pulled. Um, one thing I wanted to point out here is I don't have a uh, specific year. I need to I need to get that next time for the for this conversation, but you'll notice right away. There are two different sizes of these uh, thrust washers that go um, in behind on this hub. This is not the right size. This is not what you want. It needs to ride on that edge very snugly and evenly. The There's two different types of hubs that have this lip here and some are wider obviously than others. This is meant for the wider one. So you want that to actually set on there. You don't want there to be that huge gap because when this thing's spinning, it's moving all around. And you don't you don't want that. You want it to ride nicely right there on that edge. And they're even machined with that chamfer on the inside. And it sets perfectly up against that. And so anyway, be aware of that. Make sure you get the right part. There are two different part numbers for those. If you send me an engine, please drain it. Don't don't send me an engine full. I'm really, really trying not to do like the whole like cut to the engines apart and completely miss anything. But I'm also not trying to get too over the top, you know, with what I do and don't have. Um, I did have to cut the uh, points wires out. I was just going to try and pull them through, but there's so much garbage glued in here. This is a great example of like... Not like a, a super molested engine, but like one that has just been like messed with a lot, you know, like, oh, it's leaky. Let's do some other stupid thing. Like, oh, it's um, acting up like this. Let's, you know, fiddle with it. And just a lot of like <sighs> waste an hour to save 10 minutes type work, you know, I, I really hate that kind of stuff where it's like just commit to doing the job. It's just way out. It's a way easier to just. Do it, get it done, do it right, instead of sitting there messing and messing and messing. I, I really, that stuff just bothers me. Um, you know, it just, it's a great example of, you know, waste $100 to save $10, waste an hour to save 10 minutes, you know, all these types of ways of doing stuff where it's just like, just commit and do it, you know. But usually it just takes a little bit of a shock and then you can sit there and wiggle it off. Um, you can usually use the kickstart as a lever but there we go Ooh, come on don't want to knock my tray on the ground either though. there we go Not bad at all. Well, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get the uh, 
ratchet nut off first. Um, so get your chisel and your hammer. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but I'm just holding the sprocket. Yeah, see, that I could have probably, if I really would have gripped that, I may have even been able to get it loose just by hand. A lot of times these don't get tightened and then they just work loose in, um, or work loose while they're being ridden. Um, but he had the tab washer on, so. Okay, now that that's loose, we can uh, finish taking out our hardware. We got two things left here. If there's things you guys wanna see, just, uh, you know, I do actually read all the comments because, you know, it's not that hard to read four comments. Um, so, if there's stuff you want to see, I'll try and do my best. There has been a few requests of things I just don't want to do. Um, just because it's like either too easily arguable, I guess, in a way. Because a lot of people think that, you know, whatever their opinion is, is the only right one. Um, so I try to avoid certain conversations. Um, the other thing I've been asked to do just really doesn't um, benefit me right now uh, in the sense that like, I can't, you know, I've said that in the past too, where it's like, I didn't show you a job I did because I don't want more of them. And so I've been asked to do jobs that I just don't want to do. And you know, it wouldn't benefit me by showing you because then all I'm gonna do is just get a bunch of phone calls about people wanting me to do it. It is kind of one of those things where it's hard to keep consistent um, content coming out too because I am doing like the same thing every day and I don't think people wanna just watch me do the same thing over and over. Um, which hopefully when I can get back into doing my personal projects, it'll keep things a little bit more um, interesting and different. Um, so I don't know, it's kind of hard to keep workflow and keep content coming out um and the only reason keeping content coming out even matters is because it keeps you you know relevant and high in the algorithm um you know if people don't co comment and i hate i hate the conversation of this but people don't comment and subscribe you know then you don't get uh recommended to people and so i have to keep things interesting enough the engagement rates stay up all that it's it's such a stupid game i hate it and that, that's why you always hear all these youtubers begging you to you know like and subscribe like and subscribe and i hate that it sounds so stupid but um you know it's the only way to keep your relevancy up and you know engagement up which is required to get a lot of views so it's just one of those stupid things but like I said, there's only so much I can do as far as like what I do every day to show you guys and I'm just trying to figure out different ways to communicate it or talk about it or whatever. I'm just gonna pull these gears out um, and uh, we'll look at them together. Don't worry about the order because I have some pretty good, I think they're pretty good, uh, four speed videos you can go watch to figure out how to put this thing back together. Um, the most important thing right now is just don't lose any of the parts. You've got your little rollers on your forks, don't lose those. Um, and then just kinda, as you're pulling them out, give them a good look. Um, I, uh, I'm now remembering as I'm pulling this out, um, the conversation I had with the guy, and there's a reason this all looks so nice. Um, I now remember he was telling me that he burnt up his transmission and this is a new transmission got put in like 10 years ago or something like that. So now I remember cause I just kept thinking like, man, all this stuff looks really nice, but, uh, that's because it's brand new. Uh, I wish I could remember what the story was now. I, I'm going to have to call him after I get everything torn down. So I'll get the original story again and let you know, um, what he says, but I do remember that he had the transmission replaced because it got burnt up or something happened. And this one's new. He gave me a five speed too as like kind of collateral or trade or whatever t towards this build um, because he was considering putting the five speed in it but then did decided not to. Okay, so same routine as always. 
you get way too close to the camera. Um, you've seen me take this apart multiple times. You've seen me put it back together multiple times. Um, we are going to pull this pump off. I'll inspect this later. I'm not going to talk about the pump right now. Um, most of the time, if you're unsure, just get a new one. Do not buy the... Um, LF Harris, the, the slotted style ones, don't buy those. Those are junk. They are no good. Do not buy them. Top two are left hand thread and the crank is standard thread. Um, I'm going to grab my breaker bar and get these pulled. Um, I also have our puller tool and our crank pinion puller tool. You also need your plug to go on the end of the intake or the exhaust cam to protect the uh, taper there. All right, so I'm gonna try and do this without disturbing the table too much. But <clears throat> coming at it from different angles. And again, it's one of those deals where like that shock of an impact can be a good thing. Um, but these are pretty hard materials and so it can also break stuff. So um, I always, I don't usually recommend an impact, but I also am about to hit my breaker bar with a hammer. So, so like I said, sometimes it just takes that initial shock to kind of make, get things loose. You don't want to sit there and bash, you know, the, the gears into each other. It's, it's really hard on everything. This is the most fragile component here. Um, this spindle can get loose in the case and once that happens you're kind of screwed um you know you can repair it it, it sucks it's never going to be the same but it can be fixed it's just not what you want and then the crank is back to standard thread and so um yeah everything looks awkward and Fastest way to make it look like you don't know what you're doing is get a camera out. So once you've got your tool bottomed out on the cam gear, you can, and again, I think we talked about this last time that we were assembling. Always start in the order that allows you to continue to use the tool. So like right now, I'm taking off the exhaust first because it is locking itself between the idler and the intake. So. That way, if I take this one off, I can still use that holding tool, locking tool or whatever. If I took the intake off first, then you know I wouldn't be able to use it all the way through. It's not a big deal, it's just something that makes your life a little easier. Key fell out, keep track of that. I'm gonna set that to the side. Intake cam, all the threads and everything, all the teeth, everything looks really good inside this timing chest, so that's a good sign. Ooh, this one's on here. Ah, there it goes. Let's see if this cam key's loose or if it's in there. Yep. Perfect. Oop. All right. Um, so now at this point, all we need to do is pull that idler. Now we can get our puller tool. All right. So. Now, this is a good example. There is a plug on the side of this tool that I could technically stick uh, like a punch in. Oh, well, we don't need it because this is coming off very nicely and easily. <laughs> if this is stubborn, again, lock the crank with a extension or um, you can you know, hold this tool with a vice grip or something if you wanted to, but that one was not stubborn at all. I do have a suspicious feeling that once we get into that crank it will be pretty full um just because the the layer it, it's been well taken care of but i i still think there's going to be a lot of broke down oil so i'm going to get all the case hardware apart and split it and then we will get back together again as i'm doing this i'm realizing i think the last video i just did was a disassemble of a 650 so at this point, I'm going to pretty much just show you what I find in the trap, and then after that, I'm probably going to wait until I'm putting it back together because watching the same thing over again isn't very entertaining. So, now that I realize that, this is going to turn into an assembly video. 
that was just a quick breakdown I hope I'll probably chop that all up really quickly um, but obviously I'll let you know what all I find after the fact um, but I guess I'm just gonna spend a bunch of time cleaning all this up um, get an idea of what this guy needs let him know and then get it done um, overall not a bad engine um, you know I think really the worst thing we saw was those cylinders um, there's a chance that uh, these big ends are going to measure okay and just need a polish, but I still think that that trap's going to be full. So um, I guess we'll see what happens. You're going to hear some video in the background, but um, it's just going to be a quick little, there you go, I told you, nice and full. Uh, it looks like there's some hardened stuff on the top and then some of that gooey gel kind uh, there collecting at the bottom um, so I'm gonna dig that thing out and uh, the journals actually do measure perfect so um, they will take a polish and a new set of shells and we will be good to go worth doing yeah, yeah, what the, the, the wheels like get stuck like in a direction okay With slow motion. Why did that not I don't know. work? Why did it, like every yeah. way. We did, I just need a skateboard. This thing, this thing moves so fucking easy and then... And then all of a sudden I try to push you. Yeah. Uh, I only got three wheels. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's like a, a, a jackass stunt. Yeah. All of a sudden you just eat. So originally, originally I was going to show you guys me putting this back together because again, I've done that a million times. But instead I've got a special guest to help me and give us kind of a fresh set of eyes on this because I've said it the same way a hundred times. So Keith decided to drive 26 hours to come visit me and help me put this back together. I get to kind of, uh, you know, he's gonna be my hands and I get to tell him what to do. And then that will hopefully give me an opportunity to explain it in a uh, different way. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember where I stopped showing you anything, if it was like disassembly or whatever, but the cases are all prepped and clean. This guy did not want his stuff blasted. It's just scrubbed. Um, the crank got polished. It actually measured standard, and I refurbished the rods, um, ARP rod bolts. Everything's good to go. New bearings. Um, everything else is cleaned up down there, so we're just going to start putting it back together at this point. Um, I, oh, I do have the answer as to why I am taking it apart or why it was such a wacky um, all over the place engine. The guy that bought it, bought it from someone who was towing it behind their uh, pacer or gremlin or something from California to Colorado and it fell into gear on the highway and the guy didn't know it. So that is why I am taking it apart. It had gotten the transmission replaced after that, but that was it. That's the only thing that anybody did was put new transmission parts in. So, yeah, that, that was an interesting story. But anyway, um, we're ready to just start assembling, so that's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to have Keith um, put the fourth gear and sprocket on first. So we're going to, which has all been cleaned. He replaced the sprocket. It's actually in really good shape. Um, and so if you want to drop that, and again, I already said the bearings have been swapped so uh, we're ready to drop that in. New seal, all that's good to go. You you would have already done all this by the time you get to this stage. So, so step one, we're gonna drop fourth gear in with the sprocket on and get that tightened up because it's a lot easier to access without the other case half in the way. So a um, couple different ways you can do it. Um, you do wanna kind of test to see uh, where the sprocket wants to go. Um, they're happier in different spots sometimes. It's just, you know, it's a good thing for them to be tight, but. You do have yeah. to sometimes some them, persuade Some it. of them made up a little bit easier than others. So that one was wants to go. Yeah, there you go. So I'm just going to mark that. Beautiful. Um, so um, I'll hold this side. All right, swapped out to a proper fit. And then line up the mark you made and then just kind of give her a couple taps. Beautiful. So now... We can drop on our locking tab washer. Uh, well, <laughs> never mind. God, if it doesn't sit flat, well, if you oh, just start with like flat, bending up. Yeah, you bend up a tab just a little bit. Yep. yep. We can sneak a uh, little crowbar behind it, and there you go. And those are pretty fine threads for such a big nut, so be careful when you do those. 
Um, some guys get carried away like really fast. Yeah. I don't know if you picked up. I'll take it back off real quick. I don't know if you picked up on the. What I did so there. backing it up. Yeah. Back it off till you feel it click. <laughs> never to click again. Yeah, never to click again. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Right. There, there you go. There. Then you know your threads are right about to start. Same thing when you're uh, trying to chase threads, tapping something, or chase threads with a tap. Cool. Cool. All right. So that's a lot easier to do now than it is to try and fight it when you have two halves together. So now we'll go ahead and uh, leave that loose for now. We'll torque it later um, when we have more leverage and everything. You could go ahead and torque it up if you wanted right now, but um, we're just going to move on to the next step. So, um, I've been in the situation before where helping somebody or didn't have um, the specialty socket or the correct socket for this where you have to use a Ford wrench or a crescent or something like that. Um, so what I ended up doing, especially easier once this is you know all apart but not go around, put this in a vise, then you can go on and get it. It's still kind of a little bit of a shitty angle, but um, it's better than trying better to do it than with the case. Trying on. to do it with the case, it's impossible. So, but this is a very strange size. Uh, there's the there's like the larger and the smaller. This is obviously the smaller, the Triumph ones. But um, they actually have a, a very strange dimension. This is um, actually just a little bit off one and eleven sixteenths. So it's not something that's very common. So if you can if you can improvise and get a decent, you know, you, you, these have a pretty high torque. So you do not want to half-ass uh, tightening down that nut. But um, yeah, the the chain in the vise is a very very helpful way of getting that taken care of. Um, at this point, we are now going to uh, seal these case halves up and get the cams in and get the crank in. So when you're dropping your two cases together, I prefer to do all of the installation of the cams and the crank and everything before you make a huge mess with the Hylomar, so that way you're not touching it all up and make it, it's just, it's a sticky mess. So the first thing I like to do is make sure I get some assembly lube in the bottom of the intake um, bushing because that one has the breather disc. So just a little love with that. And then the breather disc, this one came out and it's, it rides really nicely, but you do want to make sure that those aren't all burred up and gross and like grab and the, they can sometimes have like nasty sharp edges on the two little fingers. So if you want to check that out, make sure it's not damaged and then drop it in the bottom and then kind of twirl it around your finger and make sure it feels good. If it moves free, then you're good to go. 71 up isn't going to have that, correct? Yes, you're all right. I know I played hell the first time I did my 71. <laughs> looking for that. A little bit of love on the uh, spring. And then that one, you don't want to just freely drop it down. In. I mean, you could drop it down in, but you do want to make sure you've got it fully seated because if you don't have it down between the uh, little ears, then it will cause problems um, when you go to put the cam in. So once it's... Once it's like seated down in there and you know living where it's supposed to, then drop your um, intake cam down in. And you can tell it's the intake because it doesn't have the opening for, well, that one's got the tack drive in the end of it. This one has nothing in the end of it, but if you flip them around, the intake has a taper for, or the exhaust has a taper for the points and the intake is solid. So grab the solid ended one drop it down and engage the uh, little tangs of the ears in with the cam. And you can tell because you'll actually feel the spring action and that's how you know that you've got it engaged properly. So keep kind of bouncing around, there you go. So once you can feel that spring back, that's how you know you're lined up. So that one's good to go. Little bit of assembly lube on the exhaust cam and then drop that one down in. These cams are in really good shape so we didn't have to uh, do any swapping or, or the bushings, I'm sorry. The bushings are in really good shape. The cams are in good shape too. So um, everything's just got cleaned up. And at this point, you are now going to drop your crank in. You can put a little bit of assembly lube there on the outer race, or you can put it on the rollers. 
I like it on the race because it just doesn't drip and make a big mess. Um, once you are putting the crank in, I prefer to do it. The manual will tell you to do it the other way. I prefer to do it this way. And the reason I like to do it this way is because it's easier. Sometimes these rollers want to hang up on the edges mm -hmm. of the race. And I find it easier to drop it in and then worry about the tight fitting of the timing side. Um, that's easier to manage. So, And you don't have to fight the spring assembly and all that jazz. That's just my preferred method. Um, when you install the crank, there's two ways to do it. You can use the webs as protection. So Keith has it so the rods are fully exposed. You can do that. But the other way you can do it is rotate it and then utilize the webs as protection. And then you can kind of hold on to the, uh, there you go. I don't even have to tell them what to do, but. And then as you come down and it's getting close and lining up down here, you can kind of just freely like float it around until it finds its way and it should just drop right in beautifully. A little bit of shim in. There you go. Perfect. Cool. Like butter. You know, you'd think you'd done this before. <laughs> <laughs> so now at this point, what I would like to do, and you can't put a protection on both of them, but we'll go ahead and throw our radiator over top of the lower rod. And then um, that way, if we do anything, we don't have to worry about banging it all up. We just made them look pretty, so we'll take care of them. And then once we get the other half on, we'll put the other one on. But um, now we are ready to get some sealant on. Well. Get some sealant on and then we'll put our top stud in, but we'll do the sealant first and then it kind of allows it to have a little bit of time to tack up. We're going to use Blue High Lamar today. Um, uh, that 1184 that I used before, I really like that stuff still. I just don't have any on hand and the Blue High Lamar looks really good too. Um, so, you know, just don't use Indian Head, Red uh, H or VHT, what is it? Or what's the, the high temp red silicone? Yeah. Don't use that. Don't use Indian Head. Uh, don't use blue silicone. Don't use yeah. uh, bathroom silicone. Don't yeah, use clear. don't use clear silicone. Something um, that's specific for yeah. It needs to be non-setting oil resistant. That yeah. is what you're looking for. There's so. enough power sports places across the country that you can go get Yamabond or any other. Yes, Yamabond's a good one. Just something specifically for that, not just your auto parts store. I don't have a gasket. I ripped my <laughs> gasket. I'm gonna, gasket maker is not what we're putting on here. Okay, so a nice thin film is all you really need. You don't want so much that it goos into the inside of the crankcase, uh, but you also don't want to not have enough. So um, the, the, the way we've found to have like that perfect in between um, is just like whatever sticks down. That's why you always see me like tacking it. Um, it's just kind of an easy trick to get like that perfect film. Um, so once you kind of get some down, then you can kind of work it. It has, I think acetone in it is the, what makes it uh, stay liquid and then that evaporates very quickly. So it kind of is, it's easy to work with for that reason, but you also have to kind of keep that in mind as you're working. And so we're gonna let Keith get this all laid out and then when we're ready to drop this half on, we'll come back. Um, so Keith was just asking about this front chamber and I actually do like to put sealant. I know people like talk shit and say like it's unnecessary. My problem is, is if you were to break a, you know, spring a leak in this and actually I've seen this full of oil before, like it's not unheard of to have oil inside this. If you propped yours apart, you'd probably find oil too. But how foolish is it that you get a leak out here just because you thought it was silly to put sealant out here. So if oil is finding its way into this cavity, keep it in that cavity. You know, if it starts leaking out that, it looks really silly and, and careless. So um, just go ahead. It doesn't cost anything to put sealant all the way up and around. So um that's just my personal experience i just it's it's safer that way so we're gonna get that um middle case stud right there installed um we're gonna use we're gonna use the stud installer extractors um but uh keith was asking about um just double nutting it total you know that works awesome too if you don't have these not everybody has these um double nutting it is a really great way to do it too um just don't put buy scripts on it like that's the, the last thing you do so if that's the uh, the one that fits, so we're gonna just snug this up. You don't have to smoke it. It doesn't, you know, as long as it's tight, it's gonna live in that case like it's supposed to. Perfect. 
we've already cleaned out that thread so we don't have to worry about the bolt going in um, all the threads are actually cleaned out and ready to go so um, at this point we're ready to drop um, the other case half so in a perfect world this inner race is actually going to be pretty snug over the um, timing pinion so god damn it all right after we were rudely interrupted um okay so good layer sealant everything's installed we're good to go we know our uh spring is it where it should be um yeah so a uh, little bit of uh assembly lube around both of those camshafts keith is much more conservative with it which is very respectful with the expensive brad pen um <laughs> Perfect. Uh, this hole here on the back actually is supposed to have a um, hollow dowel, so make sure it is in one half or the other um, before you go slapping this on. So, Keith, if you'd like to flip that over. So you're gonna stand on your tippy toes, well, at least I have to stand on my tippy toes, and look down and kind of give yourself as much help as you can as far as aligning at all three. So you've got both cams, you've got, and then the crank pinion will come later. But the biggest hurdle is going to be this stud right here. That's going to be, once you get it started, make sure your rod's right dead in the center, and then just kind of slowly come down on everything, nice and easy. You got a lot of things fighting you. So once you kind of get close like that, what I like to do, oh, he's already getting it. I don't even have to say anything. He's going to make it look like I take too long on stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah making me look like a hack. So at this point, what you'll notice is like, maybe it's the shoulder of one of your cams, maybe it's the alignment. But if you sit there and kind of push and, and, and wiggle and, and kind of feel it out and find out what, what's hanging you up, then that can kind of adjust. If it is your Spinning crank, yep. you can do two things. We can start by just giving it a little bit of love with a very small, We'll do the medium rubber hammer. Okay. So a medium rubber hammer, just nicely kind of gently tapping. And if it, if it has a nice sound to it, it feels like it's moving, then we can go ahead and just keep with that motion. Um, but if it doesn't want to go, yep, I think it's hanging. good now. Just making sure it's yep, Just keep giving it, and I, give it some left taps. You can hear it's got that like kind of soft tone to it there. It got a the tone change because it's starting to get tight somewhere else, I think. Yep, and if you do have to tap it, it probably was, it was never gonna drop. It's never gonna have that like finished thud. You're probably gonna have to drive it the full the full distance. So okay. just kind of bounce around with where you tap it. Yep. And you can you're we can watch it. I mean, it's going nice and smooth. Every time you hit it, it's actually getting somewhere. Your cams are still free. So, give it a couple more. There you go. There you go. Um, so at this point, you can kind of feel and see like this crank's still moving. So what can happen sometimes though, and once we start kind of keep playing, we're gonna double check and make sure. Yeah, after I said I was gonna protect him and I didn't. Um, when we start tightening up the case halves, we're gonna keep trying to make sure that this crank is free. If at any point the crank no longer is free, then we know that we're binding between the bearings. If that is the case, sometimes what you can do is after you get all of your hardware started, you can start driving the crank back and forth inside the case halves and get it fully seated because what happens is, is this timing side bearing will sometimes not quite be fully seated and it'll actually bind up. And so if that's what you're experiencing, you just have to kind of persuade it a little bit more. Now, if this wouldn't have gone smooth, I have had people um, really, really struggle with this timing side. And what I tell them is like, take a socket that fits that timing side in a race really well. And then you can heat that socket up on like a hot plate or whatever, whatever way you want to heat that socket up. And then you can set it on that and just heat transfer into that inner race real quick. Nothing too crazy. You don't want to cook it, but just that heat transfer for just a few seconds that will open that inner race up just enough to allow you to drop it on really quickly. 
doesn't cause any issues, doesn't hurt anything. You're not putting any actual flame or anything to your bearing. You're just transferring a little bit of heat from like a socket or a, a distance piece or whatever you want to use. And it's just, it's a neat little quick trick, but um, this one went really smooth, so we didn't need it. We are all ready, Every, all the hardware is in, so we are ready to go ahead and do the transmission. Um, Keith, how many you've done, how many of these have you done? Maybe three in the past 15 years. Okay, cool. So. Yep. Um, I'm going to kind of do like a hard and fast, like education on these to just make it easy. So then that way, like any of you that come up in the future, it'll be super easy. And then maybe you guys will catch on to something new. I've done quite a few transition videos, but, um, this is going to be a new angle. So I'm just going to kind of coach, uh, keep, you know, step by step on how I would do it. Um, but there are variations, so, you know, it is what it is. But, um, first thing we're going to do is again, we, we already talked about it. We've got fourth gear in there. Um, and then you guys did not see, but we did put the thrust, uh, washer in there. Um, at this point, uh, the clown hat, clown head, Snapchat ghost. There you go. <laughs> uh, the cam plate is now going to go in. Perfectly lubed up. If it is a good tight seal. Yeah, when you do that, make oh, sure yeah. that little wing is missing that yeah. fourth gear, and then that will just drop in. Beautiful. Okay, so now that we know it spins nice and free, um, we I'm going to have him push Well, I'll push it back out. But what we're going to do now is drop our spring and our plunger down in there. Same deal, get a little bit of assembly lube on there. You may have to slide your quad in that. Just, there you go. Get her started. Or cam plate, God, I'm gonna call it quad quadrant. Okay, so now, like what Keith's doing, you can push it down with your finger and then use the cam plate to push your finger out of the way. But if you can't do both, if you can't muscle it, like some people are gonna struggle. Keith's obviously got man hands, so he didn't trouble. He had no trouble with it. Um, but if you have to, you can use like a pick or something and press down with it. But um, just like that, and then make sure it kind of jumps between and it feels good and everything's smooth. And now what you're going to do is you're going to take those two wings that stick out and you're going to have those go horizontally. And so once that's horizontal, you know you're between second and third gear and that's where everything's going to get timed up. So I'm going to kind of show that's where you want. So these are what I'm calling the wings. Oops, that's what I'm calling the wing there. Um, and so when that's horizontal, that's when you know uh, it's ready. So the next step is you're going to take your lay shaft, which is the short guy, and you're going to lube up the, uh, the tip, just the tip. <laughs> and make sure that's seated and meshed with fourth gear in the back. Okay, so now that that's in, um, we can take our two... You're going to take... I don't know if I'm going to sit here and name them, because if I name all the gear yeah. numbers, I'm probably going to get them screwed up. So... We're going to take our next two lay shaft gears. They can only go in one place. I've talked about this in other videos. Um, so this is just going to be a quick version of it. If you have a fixed gear, the next one has to be a freewheeling gear. So because this one doesn't have splines on the inside, we know that that's it. Also, it has a larger diameter, so it can't fit on the main shaft. So that means it's got to go on the lay shaft. Yep. Loose, loose. So. Should call her. <laughs> So it's kind of easy to know that you've got your wrong gear because it's either going to fit or it's not. And only the engagement can only happen one way. So that's an easy way. I mean, it sounds redundant. It sounds like kind of, you know, too simple, but that's the truth. Now, before you slide that in, I want you to find out what the next gear is. It's going to go with that one. So when... Yeah. There we go. Yep. So now... The two grooves for the shift fork are going to be together. We're going to go ahead and grab our shift fork. Now, if you look at them, one has a larger radius than the other. So if you look at this, the face of this here, one is bigger and one is smaller. And so if you hold them up like so, you've got this is the larger one and this is the smaller one. So the larger of the two radiuses go on the lay shaft. And so you're going to take that and... Make sure you, uh, you can either put grease or you can put uh, assembly lube on that nipple there and then put your roller on it. And just so then that way you don't lose it later on. Beautiful. 
And so when you got those two together, and then you're going to set your shift fork on, and the other thing that's important to remember is your shift forks, your lay shaft, the, 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 where the spindle goes through is going to face towards you, and then on your main shaft, this one here, it's actually going to face away from you. So it'd be like that? Yep. So just like he's got it there, you're going to slip it in, and then you'll drop that shift fork into the track on the cam plate. In the front set, the yep, yep. Just keep pushing okay. it until it drops right in. Right there. So now that's where that's going to be. So I'm going to show you where this step is. So now this is the part that's like kind of what, the way I prefer to do it. I've seen people do it different ways, but you're going to take the next two gears from your main shaft and then look at them. If you Again, remember that you have to have like dogs and dog houses or, you know, splines next to freewheelers. So technically fourth gear main shaft is a freewheeler. So that means the next one has to be a spline. And it also correlates as far as where it plugs in. So kind of two different things to give it away as far as where the gear goes. So yep. that one's going to face with the, yep. Generous amounts of lube to make sure everything's happy later. And hold on, we're going to do the same thing with this with the shift fork. So okay. go yep. ahead and get everything prepped, and then we will use our shift fork and our two gears and all go in together at the same time. Cool. If that's next, then that would be... Yes, sir. Perfect. So, and again, you're going to remember that that long the the section that goes on the shaft is going to face away so what i like to do is if you have a different way after i tell you totally do it but what i do is i take my two fingers i put the gears on my index finger mm. and then i put the okay. uh i think you have to do it with your left hand i've never tried it with my right hand and then you're going to take the fork and lay it into the uh grooves and then use your middle finger to kind of hold that in place and then you're gonna, yep, just set it on top and then let that uh, selector fork kind of fall into place. It's, and like I said, if, you're, if you figure out a better way, you can do it another way. That's just how I prefer to do it. If you want another go at it too. Yep. So ride the back side of the of the transmission case. Okay. And so that way you're as far away as you can be to your um, cam plate, and then kind of roll it forward into place. If that gotcha. makes sense. If you want. And to you know what? Yeah. One yeah. of the things I've always learned with shit like this is if you're struggling with it or you're not sure, just pull it out and reattack it. Oh yeah. You know, like especially working on jets and whatnot. Like, yep. Like, see, I just messed that up. Oh, you, where the oh you lost your roller okay yep. yep so just instead of sitting in there and fumbling with it until you get it and getting all frustrated or whatever like just pull the shit back out and try again yep i don't know that's just my ethos on things I no that's yeah. very good advice especially on british yeah. junk <laughs> yeah. it's never never worth wrestling with it all right Yeah, if you if you ever feel like you have to redo a transmission, like don't be discouraged. Like it's better to just like approach it with, you know, a second attempt and have it succeed than to like try and force it, you know. It's just if it's not going for you, just keep playing. Not in far enough for the dog the shifter forks to clear. There we go. So now... There we go. Yep, I heard that positive drop. So now you can kind of like double check yourself by looking down the barrel and see like, are these lining up? Is this lining up? If the, if the main shaft, everything is lining up, your 
ship fork barrels are lining up. If everything looks really good, the next thing you want to do is you can take your fork spindle there and you're going to run that down and the, that little tapered in, you've got it going the right way. So you're good to go and go ahead and just persuade it. And then sometimes I will take, sometimes I'll take a pick and I'll like kind of lift up on that back one, but it looks like you actually got it perfect. So no need. And now you can uh, lube down the main shaft and just see if that bad boy likes to. WWWD. <laughs> Beautiful. And then lay shaft first gear. That is what's up. And then, like we talked about before, this shaft actually rides about right there. And so we are looking good. It is a false neutral right now. It's between second and third, like we said, but that looks and feels great. See, it's not that bad, you guys. You could do it yourselves. Buy Dan's kit and throw your transmission back together with good, solid parts. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna slip this on. This is the dreaded timed timing, timing the transmission, that conversation. Um, again, we don't wanna move this cam plate yet. It is still to where the uh, little wings are horizontal. Um, so we'll get a gasket on here and then we will uh, start slipping this cover on. All right, now that we have the gasket on, um, Keith's gonna go ahead and install the uh, middle cover. Um, at this point, really the most important thing is not to disturb anything and move our position of our cam plate. Um, because our quadrant is going to be locating and that's that big fearful timing issue. So, oh, one other thing, make sure you've got all your dowels and you're not doubled up somehow if you're swapping parts around. So we got a dowel here, but no dowel, dowel here, no dowel. So we're good to go there, but go ahead and just slip it over those studs. And when we get about a quarter of an inch away from contact, that's when we're going to worry about our quadrant. Not too bad. Just keep kind of, oh, beautiful. This couldn't have got any better. So go ahead and kind of shimmy that around. If you can hear it kind of clicking and ticking, then we know we're between. Yep, exactly what I wanted to hear. So now, yeah, you're gonna fight these on that last little bit, but um, that's where it should be. That, oh yeah, like butter. So now when you got it to where like, you know, you really can't see any gap there. It's not fully seated yet. We're gonna go ahead and just go, run in our hardware. The Allen goes in the top corner. The bolt goes down here below. And then we're gonna run a Phillips right over here in that corner. And you just kind of draw them all in evenly. You know, you guys know how that goes. You don't wanna go crazy and suck anything down. That's Jeremy's job. <laughs> I'm gonna cut that out. <laughs> WWWD. <laughs> Where's the three eighths? Oh, it's over there. On the other side of the. There you go. Go back through and give her a snug. Beautiful. So I always like to pull on this kind of back towards us because we are gonna always seat this first because the main shaft needs to be drawn all the way this way. It does not need to be going to the primary side. It will screw you up. So we'll tighten this down next, but it feels good. It's still in that false neutral in between, but you know, we'll, we'll make sure once we have that on, um, once we have the uh, ratchet, assembly on we will double check to make sure we have all four gears um but yeah just like that now keith is a four speed master <laughs> all 
Well, this is what happens when you drag out a video over a long period of time and have people come in and come out of it. Um, Keith's gone, uh, unfortunately, um, but uh, you guys got to see him help me with this. Um, it was kind of fun to show a different perspective. I think all we got done with him was the transmission. We were going to do the timing, but just, you know, we were goofing off and having a good time. So, you know, that was way more important to me. This video is getting to be too long, um, so we'll just leave it here. Um, I think I'm going to start kind of breaking things up into individual jobs instead of complete jobs um, just because I feel like I'm really uh, lacking on trying to get um, a comprehensive like breakdown of what needs to be done, what's important, what's not. It, it just, it's too much. Uh, retention is not good either. You know, people aren't watching, um, you know, 50 minute long videos. It, it just doesn't make sense. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start trying to compartmentalize each step and, and, and focus more on that. Um, I think maybe that would be even more helpful for people. Um, if you only need one little tip, you don't wanna watch an hour of me talking. It's just, it's not fun. So, um, you know, I think project stuff I'll leave longer, but individual day-to-day -day stuff, I'm just gonna start to, you know, speed it up. So, um, you know, it was a fun one. We had Keith in it. Uh, I think we tore some stuff apart. Um, you know, I. I was more focused on uh, having a good time with, you know, Keith drove a long ways to get here. And so it was more important that um, him and I had a good, fun experience. I don't really take that much time to do my own stuff. Um, so, you know, when a uh, friend shows up, it's important to uh, take time and hang out with them. So, um, yeah, whatever happened out of this, I don't know. I've been filming this video for a while now, so it's probably a total mess. But hopefully you guys enjoy it. Um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll just start picking individual little jobs and start showing those and then we can do long form, uh, project videos, uh, you know, as we go. So anyway, thanks for watching.